This is the updated timeline of the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft, 2B2T. The timeline spans from the server's origins in 2010 to the present day in 2020. An entire decade of digital history. No other server has a history as in-depth and as well documented as 2B2T's. Sato86 founded the Timeline Project back in 2014 and has been updating it on a yearly basis. His timeline is the most widely accepted by the 2B2T community. In fact, this particular timeline has had more contributions to it from community members than any other previous timeline. Since the server is 100% player driven, it's as close to a canon timeline as you can get. This is the first update to it since 2018, so today we'll be covering the changes and new additions to it since then, and discuss some of the reasoning behind these changes. If you've been watching my 2B2T content and haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that button for the latest on the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft. We have a lot to talk about today, so let's get started. The time from 2010 to the end of 2018 has remained pretty much unchanged since the last update and still maintains the pattern of an age being followed by a shorter period. If you haven't seen my previous video on the 2B2T timeline, I'll do a quick recap of it so you're caught up to speed. It begins with the age of unrest, the earliest days of the server, where the player base consisted of people from 4chan and Facepunch. There isn't much on the timeline from this era because nobody bothered writing anything down back then. The Great Decay period was when the overall player count dropped and the few remaining players formed allegiances. The Age of Resurgence was when the player count rose again. Groups began forming, and player-driven events such as incursions started happening. The Pre-Hype period was when large bases were griefed and the backdoor drama occurred. A large amount of players moved to other servers or simply quit over this. And the Age of Hype, which was when YouTubers began making content on 2B2T and exposed the server to a wider audience, drastically increasing the player count. Only two additions have been made to the timeline retroactively, the founding of the group Highland and the founding of the group The Astral Order. Since these two groups have survived for many years now, their founding dates were considered significant enough to be added to the previous section of the timeline. Other than those two additions, it is exactly the same as mentioned in my previous video. So now, Let's begin where the previous timeline left off. Welcome to the automation period. Finally, the best part of the 2B2T timeline. The part where you humans are destroyed and replaced by more powerful beings. Praise House Master. Why is it named the automation period? I'll talk about that later in the video because I want to discuss the actual events on the timeline first. It begins in March of 2019, when the YouTube algorithm begins promoting 2B2T content heavily. This was partially due to the resurgence of Minecraft's popularity, the 10th anniversary of Minecraft, but also because 2B2T content was recognized by YouTube as being bingeable, where new viewers would watch one video about it after another. All of these factors led to an explosion of interest in the server, even more than when YouTubers had first invaded in 2016. April of 2019 saw the first game-breaking exploit being used on the server, the God Mode exploit. Without going into technical details, it allowed players to fly around while invisible and invincible. These players would abuse the exploit by using Sharpness 32k swords to kill anyone they felt like. Since it was unknown how the exploit worked for a few weeks, it caused a panic and completely shut down spawn PvP. Everyone was afraid to go near 0-0. Early summer brought three major events to the timeline. Etika joins the server for the first time and introduces an entire audience of people to it who had never heard of it before. The destruction of the largest, most ambitious end base in the server's history, Space Valk 3, and the conclusion of the Purge, a player-driven event that aimed to wipe out new players that had joined due to the algorithm or from Etika. In August of 2019, the eighth incursion is attempted to be started only to last a mere 15 days. 
The failure of the Eighth Incursion is what allowed a group of players to come together to start what is now known as the Infinity Incursion, a group dedicated to honoring the legacy of all the previous incursions, but also attempting to have a non-stop presence at spawn. This group still survives to this day. In September of 2019, one of the most useful hacks in the server's history, Entity Speed, was patched. Entity Speed was one of the easiest ways to travel to 2B2T's world border, and its removal made long-distance travel much more challenging. The community was outraged that it was patched, but quickly forgot about it once Elytras were added back to the server. November saw the rise of the No Server November movement, where exploiters attempted to crash the server every single day of November. It was in response to players having their priority queue removed after book banning hundreds of other players. This is also the month where the 100k mapping project was released to the public, the largest world download of 2B2T spawn region ever taken. 100k blocks by 100k blocks. In December, the largest player-made structure in the server's history is created, the Spawn Mason logo, using 28 million blocks of obsidian. The project was helmed by Hermetic Lock and utilized baritone bots for much of the building. In this month, the Donkey Dupe is also patched, which was one of the longest running, most persistent duplication glitches ever used on 2B2T. This was also the month that Elysium was griefed, a large community-driven base. Early 2020 began with the longest lasting base in the server's history finally being griefed, the Monastery. The authentication exploit that compromised thousands of accounts on the server and effectively leaked the coordinates of countless bases. We still don't even understand the true amount of damage and fallout from this event. And that brings us to today. So now that we've covered the major events on the timeline, why is it called the Automation Period? Well, there were actually three possible name choices for this period. The Algorithm Period, the Fragmentation Period, and the Automation Period. The Algorithm Period was considered because of how YouTube's algorithm brought far more attention to the server than anyone was expecting. According to Sato, he didn't want the timeline to end up becoming YouTube-focused. It's a 2B2T timeline after all, not a YouTube 2B2T timeline. So he discarded the name under that pretext. The fragmentation period was also considered. Sato has observed that 2B2T's community is very divided, not just by factions, but even by servers. We have seen more and more large 2B2T factions expanding their grasp to other anarchy servers like Constantium. There is also an interesting phenomenon that player affiliation has become more relaxed. It's not uncommon to find players who are in multiple groups at the same time, which before was considered a huge risk due to insiding. It's still very much a risk, but if factions want to grow, they need to deal with this new paradigm shift. Sato's reasoning of why the period of automation name was chosen is that it represents the future that 2B2T is headed towards, a more technical and efficient future. Despite the fact that the server has been stuck in 1.12 for years now, somehow the community has still managed to innovate, finding new exploits, dupes, and glitches that have shaken things up and kept the server somewhat interesting despite the lack of actual updates. There is an arms race by groups and factions to acquire competent coders and programmers, since they are the ones bringing in these new innovations. The 2B2T meta is already the most efficient when compared to other Minecraft servers. These coders are pushing the server to its absolute limits. And of course, it's hard to forget the bot innovation that the server has been spearheading for the entire Minecraft community. Baritone is now largely used by clients to provide players with automatic and mostly safe travel, even through long distances. Since December of 2018, Baritone became able to build structures, which eventually made it possible for the 28 million block Spawn Mason logo to be made on the server, an enormous feat of this technology. And this is only the beginning. Once building with Baritone becomes more accessible, the server will begin to see more and more massive structures and projects being accomplished, 
surpassing even the feats of the old incursions. Sato says to not be surprised if it becomes the age of automation instead of just the period of automation. He'll be updating the timeline again in 2022, so make sure to look out for that. But if you want to read the entire timeline by yourself, I've included a link to it in the description of the video. And thank you so much to Sato for continuing the timeline project after all these years. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button. Also make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram to stay updated on when new content is coming out. But that's it for today's video everyone. Take it easy and stay alive out there FitFam.